welcome to Band Advice TV. I am your host, Mark V, and this is... Matt. And guess what this is? This is the Matt and Mark About Music Podcast. Oh my God, is that what this is? It is. This is like episode 12 or something like that. I thought this was a kiss concert. No, no, not oh, at all. And okay. don't you even try to kiss me either. <laughs> So if you saw the last uh, last podcast, listened to it, Matt had uh, interviewed me. Now it's my turn, and uh, we'll see where this goes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you, you touched on how we met back in, um, gosh, 92 at OSU. 1892, yeah. 18, it feels like it sometimes, <laughs> doesn't it? It does. You know, I answered this little... Uh, little flyer we put a rock band together if you like gnr and if you like all this other stuff and then we ended up being a folk duo yeah right. so quite the the departure from my initial plans there but i had a good time I mean, in hindsight don't go to stillwater oklahoma and try to form a hard rock band no, no it probably won't work no. out for you no well we we did pretty well though we had a good time yeah it was fun and it uh it was the start of a beautiful friendship <laughs> right right yeah. louie <laughs> but tell me Let's let's take a step back though. You know, I, I know basically what's happened to you since ninety two and forward, but yeah. how'd you get into music in the first place? <sighs> Man. I mean, I remember like when I was little, I just remember I loved the way it made me feel when I listened to it, you know. Mm -hmm. And it just seemed like you know, no matter what no matter what was going on, no matter what was troubling me, you know, I could put on a song that I liked and you know, just it just took over, you know, it takes over your body. You know, mm -hmm. when you turn it up loud, it's like, man, I'm alive. You know, you can yeah. feel it. And then, you know, you start to get the meaning of like the lyrics and the melodies. And it's just, you know, it's a feeling that you get when you look to the West. <laughs> to the West. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, it's just like, it's a feeling that, you know, the lyrics and the melody and the vibe and it all gives you. And it's just like, man, I just couldn't, I couldn't put it out of my mind, mm -hmm. you know? And my parents were like, well, you want to study music, you know, you should you should study classical music. It's real disciplined and all this. So they started me Sounds out. Sounds like something Carlos would say. Yeah, they started <laughs> me out on Suzuki violin when I was oh, in second wow. grade. Nice. And so, man, I mean, you know, there's a lot of good uh, tenets in Suzuki violin that I still use with my students today. Oh, even. cool. You know, and the fact of the parents kind of help them be accountable for the practice time and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. and you know, it's very disciplined. It's very regimented. Mm -hmm. You you really have to toe the line, you know? <laughs> and so I, I, I did that and I didn't like that. I didn't like it. It was too confining. There were, it was strict. It was a lot of rules, you know, and anybody that knew me when rules I was, suck. <laughs> when I was seven or eight knew that I didn't like rules. Uh, seven <laughs> or eight, don't. 48. Still uh... don't. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you're 48 yet. Yeah. But... Uh, 28. Yeah. 28. yeah so, yeah, yeah. you know, it's like when I was doing that, I learned a lot about music, though, because mm -hmm. I had a really good music teacher. She was very accomplished. I worked with her for, you know, five or six years, and, you know, the music program in the school was pretty good. And then I just kind of got tired of it to where I was just like, I don't want to do this anymore. It was, you know, one private lesson a week, a group lesson all day long, you know, then a recital, and <laughs> I just didn't want to do it anymore. And so I quit that. So a couple years later, I, I you know, I started getting a guitar, you know, I was like, man, that just sounds awesome. And I remember seeing like, you know, when we first got cable. I remember seeing like flick of the switch by ACDC oh, yeah. and just be like, what is that? <laughs> what is that? I mean, the sound where can of I it find just, a little schoolboy boy, man, <laughs> where can I find one of those guitars? that sounds yeah. like that. That's what it was. And it was like, man. And so there I was just hooked, you know, I was like always listening, always watching, always reading, just trying to f find anything I could about bands and music. It didn't matter country, western, blues, rock, metal. I mean, I loved it all, I still do, you know. And uh, you know, I started playing guitar when I was about 14, 15 and man, I just dove right into it and mm -hmm. it was just like I didn't want to do anything else, you know. Yeah. And I just realized I'm like, well, I mean, everybody else is thinking about being a whatever they're going to be. And I'm just like, I just want to play guitar. You yeah, know, yeah. I just want to do this. And, you know, I was really into all the greats at one time or another. I've been to all, and into, into all of them, but you know, I just, after a while you realize it's like, well, they're already greats. And I'm just Matt Mason out here in Oklahoma <laughs> being a half ass impersonation of them. So what it's really great and everything to absorb what they're doing, but you got to kind of take it on to the next level. And sure. You know, 
try to not like try to be the next Eddie Van Halen because there already is one Eddie Van Halen. Right. There's already one Zach Wilde. There's already one Steve Vai. So you got to think of the mindset of, well, let me take a little bit from all of them and, you know, use it for what I'm doing. And my buddy Joe, you know, he was like, he's a little younger than my parents, but he had some kids that are like me and my sister's age. And so we knew them growing up and he'd been playing like 30 years by the time I met him. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, he had, you know, a collection of LPs and instructional books and helped me record stuff. And just, you know, he's just a cool friend that like showed you, showed me the way, you know, right? I'd show up over there and he'd be like, what have you been doing? Okay. Here's this book about Brownie McGee. And <laughs> here's this book about Joe pass. And here's this thing about, you know, all these people that, you know, really weren't being shoved down your throat at the local guitar store in 1984, right. you know? <laughs> so I got into that and, you know, he taught me a lot about music and just about how to think, you know, mm -hmm. just musicality. And so I, uh, you know, that's when I got up there to Stillwater. I was like, man, I want to get me a band going. I want to start rocking out. <laughs> and <laughs> lo and behold, you know, people that were into rock music in Stillwater, just there wasn't really that much of a scene of that there. You no. Know? Uh now, you had a couple of a couple of bands that try to come through and do the really hard stuff, but you know that's well you, know, you and I talked about that that's when the red dirt thing was really taken off, so if you were the medicine show or anything similar to that red dirt rangers and stuff then then you had a place of still water, but rock wasn't so much I mean they had some of those bands you know that would play at Joe's on Wednesday night and they they were kind of rock, but, yeah, you know it was never like cheap trick you know uh type rock it was right. always kind of like country rock. Sure. And so that's cool. I mean, I'm glad I went there. I, I learned a lot by watching those people and playing with some of them and stuff. But, you know, uh, I just kind of, you got to sort of, I sort of figured out I had to kind of evolve with what was going on there. And so mm -hmm. I don't know that it really was out there doing what they were doing, but, you know, it kind of made me realize there's another kind of music really out there. Yeah. You know, I'd never really heard that growing up in Bartlesville. It wasn't really something I was into, you know, and being able to, too, you know, you're too young to go to bars. You kind of cut off from most of it sure. back then. Now it's like everywhere. Well, even then you were too young to go to a bar. <clears throat> yeah. There's, there's a conversation for another time. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so I got there to Stillwater and like, dude, it took me so long cause I had to walk all the way back to the door. <laughs> yeah. So we, we, we met down there and I was like, well, all right, you know, I'm, I need to practice my singing and play in any way. And this will be fun. Cause we can, go play some stuff close to campus and kind of mm -hmm. get used to performing live, you know? Yeah. Before that, it was like I was the guitarist who had a different singer, bass player, and a drummer. You know, I was never really the lead singer of anything until then. And so that was a new one for me. But, mm -hmm. you know, I th I'd say we were pretty successful at it. Oh, sure. For, for as much much work as we put into it i think we got quite a bit of yeah because we didn't we didn't rehearse at all <laughs> we no. would rehearse maybe once a week and we'd play once or twice a week and yeah, uh, yeah we did that for well, four or five months until till may yeah yeah and then yeah. you know we, and you got up here and we played up here for you know a little bit and had a couple of times some and, parties here or there yeah. those are fun gigs you know learn how to do it where it's not like you know a big deal if <laughs> you have a few too many good you too yeah. many cold treats by ten thirty at night <laughs> it's not that big of a deal yeah you know? yeah yeah well cool so uh you know you had your band tight-eyed sunrise back in college mm -hmm. and uh how long did that go on for oh that was short-lived that was you know a couple of years a year a couple of years maybe okay well i found a tape of yours so oh yeah i may have to digitize and send it your way yeah howard days. sent me howard sent me that whole thing all did digitize oh, yeah oh, great awesome yeah pretty neat so then after uh after i matriculated and i guess your tight-eyed sunrise kind of fell by the way so well about two years later we kind of got the duo back together did yeah. a couple of gigs yeah but you were living in Stillwater. I was here, the mm -hmm. travel, and it just, I was never one for trying to go out and book gigs either. It was just, well, I remember that one that we did as a Cherry Street Brewery, and I got in that car wreck right before. Oh, it. yeah. I had to play the whole thing when, oh, when I man. found out later it was a couple of broken ribs. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that was terrible. Yeah. That was terrible. But then you, uh, so you were recording and stuff, and you were forming another band at that time, huh? Mm hmm. Yeah. And so I started Hurricane Mason in like 98, and so. You know, I've been through a lot of different people in that band, and mm -hmm. I mean, just, it's amazing, man. It's like, you know, when I was younger, I remember telling my parents, it's like, man, I just want to play music for a living, and they'd be like, well, get ready, because it's going to be a rough ride. You're going to, this is going to happen, and that's going to happen, and, and I'm like. How right were they? 
Uh, they got a hundred percent on the test. <laughs> <laughs> They're right. It all, it all did happen, you know? And it's, you know, it's just like, it's just amazing that I'm still around. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still yeah. around, you know? I mean, it really is. And so I, I, I band, you know, went on, it's 20, 20 years now. So a lot of people give up on you. If you don't make it big in a year or two, they give up and, well, it's easy for them when they're just hired guns, too. I mean, you're the guy who's putting all the effort and the money in and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, and I had, you know, different times of the, the band, you know, just different rhythm sections and right. different conglomerations. And I like to keep it, you know, fun and interesting and, you know, play different song, every different set every night, mm-hmm. you know, just because we're playing this thing this year and we played it last year doesn't mean we're going to play set one and three this year because we did two and four last year. It means... Right. We're, you know, we're working from a lot of different material, a lot of different songs, a lot of different things. And so that's a handful. You know, I don't like, I don't like phoning it in really. I like doing, mm-hmm. doing it, doing it right every time, you know, sure. if I can. And so, you know, I've been through a lot, a lot of different members, a lot of different phases, a lot of different recordings, a lot of different lessons and, you know, how this goes. And right. Cool. So, the, the band Hurricane Mason, it's kind of on hiatus now, or are you just kind of doing the solo thing, or what's what's your, your plans for it? Well, I think, you know, I've been trying to re- release all this music that I recorded at some point. I've been trying to get all that out there at some somehow or another. Mm-hmm. And I really think, you know, Hurricane Mason is a good vehicle for that, and maybe it's time to have another vehicle, maybe a couple more vehicles. You know, I really... I really would like to do different material, mm-hmm. you know, and that means playing in different places. That means finding an uh, audience for material. And I think, right. you know, the answer is not like gauging success on something, just going out there and playing a few local bars and mm-hmm. seeing how it goes. That's not really a gauge of success. Right. I think that like, you know, I'm looking, I'm working on a few things. I'm trying to get clear as far as the next big thing, the next, the next, you know, pet project, I don't really know. I mm-hmm. mean, I'm, I'm kind of this year taking this year as like it comes, you know, like, Hey, I'm going to, if I get a band gig, I need a band. I'm going to go get me a band and we'll see what happens. You know, okay. Hey, I really want to play with these guys. I always like these guys. Let's see what they, how they play together and how we can do this together. Is this going to be, you know, good with their schedule? Is this going to be good with their sort of, Work ethic, you know, you just don't know till you sure. really get in there and start doing it. So I haven't really been doing much as far as going out there and trying to play at the, you know, sports bar in the corner. You know <laughs> what I mean? I'm just kind of like yeah, trying to focus on other things, releasing music, developing, you know, some alternative streams of income. Right. right. Both musical and non. Sure. And God, I mean, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, man. It's just, you know... Every year, 100, 150, 175 gigs each year are booked by me, played by me. Half the songs written by me a lot of times. You know, it's just, man, I'm tired, you know? Yeah. I mean, it takes a lot, of, a lot of energy. And so I'm just doing this year a little different. Yeah. You know, and so I'm just picking up a band when I need one and just seeing who's around and who wants to do it and mm-hmm. who can do it and who's got kind of the right... Uh, you know, they want out of this what I want out of it. Right. You know, and that's the first thing is, hey, if this guy wants to play covers and stay within 20 miles of home, I'm sure he's a nice guy. I'm sure he's great, but it's just like not really what I'm wanting to sure. do. So I'm going to be real disappointed if I try to think I'm going to go forward with that. Mm-hmm. And so that's great. There's nothing wrong with it. Not a darn thing wrong with that. It's just I got to figure that's not really what I'm trying to do. So, so when you're looking for a band, you're looking for people to play with, are you looking for people that are going to kind of follow your vision or are you looking for people to kind of collaborate with and craft a new vision? Kind of depends. Okay. Kind of depends. You know, I mean, obviously the band one for one, one for all type thing that works pretty good Mm -hmm. in a lot of situations, a lot of situations it doesn't. So I'm kind of now like, you know, Hey, listen, I need this. I need a, rhythm section for this gig i'm gonna hire you and i'm gonna try to play stuff that i know that they can Mm -hmm. get without killing themselves you know (laughs) i don't have the budget for a lot of rehearsing sure 
I don't have the time for a lot of rehearsing. They don't have the time for a lot of rehearsing. So I'm going to try to pick some people that I know that I think can play some relatively reasonable, you know, level and can get, you know, on board with my discography. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have tons of original songs released and unreleased, plus I have a big, huge repertoire of cover songs. You know, I don't play everything the same thing mm-hmm. every night, you know, and it depends. If I got somebody on bass, I might play this kind of stuff. If I got another guy on bass, I'll play some other kind of stuff. And so it's just... It's kind of fun, really. You it's know, cool. it keeps you on your toes. It keeps you flexible. It keeps you, you know, not getting locked in. Oh my <laughs> gosh, one person can't make it. We're not going to be able to do anything. Right, right. You know, and that it takes a little bit of working out to get to that point. Sure. I, I remember thinking about it when I was little. I was hearing people say stuff like that, like, one of these days on New Year's Eve, your main band isn't going to be able to make it. So what are you going to do? I'm like, well, uh, Man, that sounds scary. <laughs> so you realize, well, now you cry. <laughs> yeah, now you just, you know, find somebody that's good and sure can fall in and play an hour or so, make sure that they they really really are on the page and go yeah. do the gig, you know. Yeah, yeah it's not going to be the greatest thing in the world, but you know, it gets the job done if it meets expectations yeah. of the the people employing you. Yeah. May not be your ideal thing, but, you know. Right. That's cool. That's cool. So you said that this year you're going to do things differently. I know that you are focusing on your getting your content out there. You got your website. Uh, you're releasing that you release that EP and stuff. What else? What else you got going on? Other well, than hanging out here with me. <laughs> I uh, I've started this thing. It's called the Couch Diddy. The Couch Diddy. Yeah. So the Couch Diddy is like, uh, you know, a minute or or so. Mm-hmm. Just me me playing some little ditty on the couch nice you know how do you play a couch uh well <laughs> you know i can play beethoven on the couch no it's just <laughs> like just i got you recording on your little uh voice recorder mm-hmm. and then making a little video on, on itunes you know just i constantly writing riffs i've got all kinds of riffs all the time just little musical ideas and so just i mean it's such a microwave society it's such a fast food society man sure. i mean you know, even me, I, I I love these bands, but I can't watch every eight and ten and twenty minute video. Yeah, they put that's out true. There, you know, it's a, it's that whole, well, musically, which is now TikTok. It's those quick, you know, yeah. ninety minute. I'm sorry, ninety second kind of thing. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, so I, you know, and then it's like, man, I mean, you know, I, the recording process costs a lot of money, and at this point, unless you're really somebody. It's really, really hard to recoup anything. Right, right. You know, I have a hard time getting excited about paying a lot of money to record into you know, $5,000 microphones knowing that, you know, it's going to take me till I'm 1,000 years old to right. <laughs> recoup the money that I spent on making this recording. So you got to get the creativity out there some way, mm-hmm. low cost. So YouTube's free, you know. And hopefully Damn you can so. make some cash off of that that can help finance some of the recording too. Yeah, and yeah. so this year my 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 quest is to figure out, okay, how do I get this YouTube channel monetized? Mm-hmm. How do I get people like signed up and you know subscribing to this? Sure. And so I think, you know, once people start to see that there's content there that you have a better chance maybe, but I really don't know. And so that's what I'm hoping to kind of find out cool. this year. We'll be sure to link this video uh in the end card to Yeah. to your thing there, so. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to hearing some couch ditties. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's, it's just fun. You so know. So what's next after that? So you got the couch ditties. You got your your site. You may do some more recording. You may go out and play some more. You're just gonna kind of keep on keeping on like that, or do you have some big goal in mind that you're striving for? Man, I mean, you know, the biggest goal is keep making music. Okay. Got to do it in whatever whatever way you can. Sure. And you know a big, huge recording budget or even any recording budget, you know, that's hard to come up with, man. I've been Mm -hmm. through a lot, you know, accidents and just all kinds of crazy stuff that's happened to me. It's like, you know, I just got to keep making music. Just got to keep getting it out there. And I think that, um, you know, I got a lot of content that I already did. I got a lot of content that I'm already doing, continuing to do. It's like helping me to get better. It's like the, the technical part of it, you mm-hmm. know, before it was like, 
okay, you know, you, you get iMovie on your phone, now what? Okay. Right. Then right. you get in there and start fooling around. It's like, oh, this is just as easy like they say. <laughs> Five minutes, you'll have a mo- feature-length yeah. movie. Yeah. You know, and it's like, man, you know. It's just all the techniques involved, too, like lighting and stuff, you know. Spend an hour up here just getting the lighting situated. So, so, yeah. So not too many harsh shadows and, you know, hiding the double chain. <laughs> right. Absolutely. You know, so just getting better at that part sure. of it and getting kind of a, you know, workflow together. Cause like, you know, before I had less helping me and Ace would help me and, you know, we're kind of working towards one common goal and those guys are gone now, you know, and it's just been a real struggle for me to kind of like get a workflow going. Right. Right. You know, to be like, Hey, I want to do this or, Hey, I want to do that. And, you know, you're working with older technology and you're working with, I'm not real sure. I kind of think I might know how this goes, but you know, it's just been a real challenge getting up to that. But I figure, man, I got to I got to do it. I can't just sit here and let technology get away from me. Right. You know, it's just part of it, unfortunately. That is true. It's just like trying to work an old four track, you know. Yeah. There was a big learning curve on that, especially when you got into ping-ponging channels. Man. And stuff. Yeah, there was. I think I'm going to do a, I found my four track. I'm thinking do a do a demo or video on that one of these days. Man, I'm right. telling you, it's just, so. you know, if it was good enough for Bruce Springsteen, it's got to oh, be good gosh, enough for us. Record. Yep, that's cool. Well, you know, a bit of advice I'll give you that I, I came across the other day, too. They're saying if you're going to do this stuff, you've got to be very regimented in your time. you got to say, okay, on Monday I'm doing this, and Tuesday I'm doing this, and mm-hmm. Wednesday afternoon I'm doing that. And you, you, you carve out the time and you just stick to that schedule and that way you can get all those pieces in there. And, and after a while it becomes just second nature. So yeah, I know. Yeah. And that's one thing, man, I'm telling you what, if the next <laughs> time management one oh one is very hard for me. It really is. I mean, I'm your typical absent minded professor type. I just, well, being the, the industry that you are and being self-employed, the whole concept of a weekend versus a weekday is probably not what everybody else is. So. <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I mean, I've, I figure I've, st- I've started playing shows anywhere from, you know, let's say starting at 6 a.m. Mm-hmm. All through the day and all through the night. I've started shows at 10 a.m. I've mm-hmm. started shows at 9 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 12 p.m., <laughs> 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 9 p.m., 9.30 mm-hmm. p.m. by bar time. By bar time. And this bar, this bar has got 25 minutes ahead. So, you know, <laughs> it's like it's not for everybody because, you know, I know some of my friends, they, they like structure way too much. They can never hang with this because right. it's just like you're reacting all the time. Oh, mm-hmm. well, something, something fell out. Something, something happened here and there and everywhere else. And it's just like, you never know what's going to happen. Right. And you, you can think you're doing this, 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 and this, but when it comes down to it, well, so-and-so this and so-and-so that, and next thing you know, you're sitting on your ass at home wondering what happened. Well, yeah. I mean, we have even <laughs> ran into that while we're trying to do these, you know, we're trying to once a month, get together, record four or five episodes and then I'll be sick or something will come up or you'll blow your finger off again. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. No, I hope not. But you know, but we just got to kind of roll with it. And I know our adoring fans will, will be okay if we miss a week. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All 11 of them. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, adoring fans, I don't know about adoring fans, but people that maybe tune into this thing might get a little bit of insight and a little bit of laugh out of it. Absolutely. Maybe it'll turn into, you know, a movie on Netflix or whatever. Who knows? Yeah, Netflix. Cool. (laughs) All right, man. Well, is there anything else you want to... uh talk about or anything that we didn't touch on, on well the... i'm back to teaching again oh, i took great. another teaching gig up in, in collinsville this, this guy runs a drum sh- studio up there in collinsville so i'm i'm filling out you know one day a week nice so i've got tuesday full up so wednesday is the next one so what is your teaching technique your style do you uh do you go in and give them the basics teach them the music theory and all that or you just wait for a kid to say, hey, I want to learn how to play this Pearl Jam song, and you teach it to them. Oh, yeah. Well, it's it, it's like you got to have a variety of teaching models. It depends on the person. Okay. You know, and so, you know, I teach a, an, a 10-year-old kid a lot different than I would teach a 50-year-old 
person, you know. About the same mentality. <laughs> same maturity level, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At least the 50-year-olds I know. Yeah, so, you know, included. they come in and they're like, oh, I just love Toby Keith. I want to play Toby Keith. And then I turn them around. Next thing you know, they're walking out of there playing Led Zeppelin, and Jimmy uh, Andrew. Well, there you go. You know, so you got to like. You're corrupting the young. That's you good. know, d- good. different different people have different reasons for wanting to do it. So mm-hmm. it's my job to figure out, well, what are their musical goals? Do they have any musical goals? Have they thought about it at all like sure. this at all? And, you know, some of them just like the sound, the sound of it. And I try to instill that in list, just fall in love with the sound of it. You will never feel like this is drudgery if you mm-hmm. fall in love with the sound of it. So, uh, you know, some of them, they don't, they're like the kind of person that just wants to get in the car and turn on the car and drive. Yeah. They don't necessarily want to know what size the engine is and how. Yeah, <laughs> they don't yeah. want to know all about that stuff, sure. you know. But I try to like pull them into that yeah. because I realize it's like okay, when I figured out like the chord changes on, like a Rolling Stone by Bob Dylan, mm-hmm. you know, you can hear it going C D mm-hmm. E F G, and you're like, well, what are those chords? <laughs> Oh, they're the chords in the major scale. Yeah. C major, D minor, E minor, F major, uh-huh. G seven. And you're like, oh. See, if I would have known learned that, <laughs> yeah. then I would be this would have been a lot easier sure. figuring the song out. So when you try to like show it to them that way, then it's kinda you know, I try to get them where they trust me to show them the way to doing whatever they want. Man, I got students that are metal bands, I got students that you know, some of them are jazzers, some of them are just rock and rollers, some of them quit playing. You know, mm-hmm. it's like over all these years of teaching, I've had a lot of different kinds of students. And, you know, it's just cool to see them still doing it or going out there and going after it. You should teach them all the, the Nashville the Nashville way, the one, four, five. Oh, yeah, the numbering they'll system. Learn, the numbering system. They'll, they'll uh, learn music theory really quick that way. Yeah, <laughs> well, one, and one, you know, it, so. one of my big big ones is, you know, okay, what key are you playing in? Right. Because that was, to me, it was always a mystery. Mm-hmm. You know, and so when you... What do you mean G is in, key, is in the key of G and C? It makes no sense. Yeah, <laughs> right. And so, you know, when you start to figure it out, it's like, hey, you know, you, you kind of got to know what key you're playing in because right. it kind of makes a difference in... You know, sort of what scales you choose and mm-hmm. kind of what reference point you're going to start and end on, you know. And so just teaching them, like, what key is this in? Mm-hmm. And what does it mean when they say, oh, it's just a shuffle one, four, five? Well, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. You know, and not like, I, and another thing I always tell them is, you know, there's no such thing as a dumb question. I guarantee I had the same question mm-hmm. at some point. And, you know, don't think I want to laugh at you or yell at you or nothing. Cause I guarantee you, I was wondering the same thing. Sure. Then when I finally figured it out, I felt like such an idiot. Cause I didn't, <laughs> I didn't have the guts to ask somebody. You, well, you get the, those moments of enlightenment where they were like, Oh, that's how that all comes. Yeah, from, man. You know? I mean, it's... that, that chord thing and the Dylan oh. song was just like, blow my mind, you know? <laughs> it's, you know, that's that's music. It's learning to play an instrument. You have these <laughs> these plateaus where you're just going, and then all of a sudden something just, you know, you let some weird chord change. It's like, and you're enlightened now. You're in this yeah. next level, this next step. And those are, for me, playing guitar, those are always the moments I loved. Yeah. Because you'll sit there and for months and just trudge along the same, the same, and the same. And then all of a sudden you just do something stupid that you wouldn't even think of before. And mm-hmm. it's like, whoa. I know, man. There's joy in the discovery of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. still, you know, I was telling somebody the other day, it's like, Man, I don't know what it is, but, you know, you kind of have to have a little bit of this Peter Pan syndrome. You kind of have to think about, like, kind of in naive um, mindset to, you know, just be open to this discovery, you know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Because so many times I think people get shut off to that, and it's just no, there's no excuse for it. You got to keep that, you know, artistic thing flowing, you know? Right. So I really enjoy that. I really enjoy teaching. I really like, you know, working with people of any kind. I mean, like I said, I got all kinds of different kinds of people that, you know, they start out maybe liking one thing and then they turn out liking something completely different. And next thing you know, they're, they're playing heavy metal in, you know, <laughs> Omaha or something like that. Awesome. Well, cool, man. It sounds like you got a lot of stuff going on. I'm, I'm real proud of you after all these years still doing it. I, I've always admired you for for trying it and, and, and going for it and sticking to your guns about being a professional musician. Man, I, I did. I never had the guts to do it. So man. And it takes <laughs> a lot of personal courage. And I always, yeah. I always say I'm not the best. I'm not the richest. I'm not the coolest. I'm just the most, one of the most dedicated. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just remember standing there at that jukebox and pizza Inn in Muskogee, Oklahoma, just listening to Okie from Muskogee. Just thinking, man, I just want to be on the stage so bad playing this. Yeah, I don't care what else is. I don't care what else is out there. I just want to do it. Yeah, that's that's, cool. that's it. 
That is cool. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, best of luck to you. It's good talk. It's good to uh, get more insight into yeah, man. This what is makes fun. Matt Mason tick. Yeah, and... this is the interview segment. This is yeah, good. Yeah, well, we may have to uh, <laughs> dig up some more uh, skeletons out of the closet to talk about. Well, in the yeah, future. we got plenty of funny stories oh, to tell. Yeah, we definitely ought to do that. So we ought to pick some of our craziest stories and just have a dialogue on that. I mean, I'm thinking the drive me out to the lake deal. Oh my god, the snow Ninja. incident. Um, <laughs> The, the, be- the beads on Fat Tuesday. Oh, man. And hard- <laughs> I got pictures from that night, too. Dude. Oh, man, that was good. Oh, yeah. Oh. Lots of deep Ellum playing down in deep Ellum. <laughs> yeah. Busking on the street corner. Yep. Good times. All right, man. Well, hope you guys enjoyed the interview sections of uh, the last podcast and this one. Be sure to check out uh, after this. We'll have uh, some links to his... Is on the couch sessions. What, what you call it? Couch ditties. Couch ditties. By Jack and Diane. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Matt. I am Mark. This is Matt. This Don't is... let your meatloaf. There you go. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>